showers and thunderstorms are likely across a broad reach in the next few days, then bigger concerns are on the table next week with a strong system and its impactful storm outbreak that it will bring. In addition to those topics, I'll talk about temperatures too, so make sure you're sticking around for the full video as I'll cover the USA's weather in 7 minutes. Timestamps are down in the description of this video if you want to skip ahead to a specific point in the update. I want to go ahead and start this one though by overviewing the future radar as we have a near-term active weather pattern to watch. While it doesn't necessarily mean severe weather, we're definitely going to have many zones tracking at showers and thunderstorms and the general standpoint. A few stronger ones here or there as we go into our Friday afternoon and evening. And here's a look at the zones that are most likely to be impacted with a cold front extending from parts of the Great Lakes and Midwest all the way back down to the Southern Plains. All of those zones and then in points eastbound we'll be watching a threat for some storms and the best chance for more scattered to widespread coverage of storms as we go through Friday midday on through the evening. That's going to be in those zones I just circled from the Mid-South through the Tennessee Valley into the Ohio Valley parts of the Appalachians and even the lower Great Lakes. You might hear some thunder or at least see a thundercloud near you. And of course, if thunder roars go indoors, even if severe weather isn't a big threat, you can still be struck by lightning if you're outdoors. So make sure you're planning accordingly with your outdoor activities there and all the way back to Texas and Oklahoma where an isolated severe storm could happen later in the day Friday. As we go out of Friday into Saturday, there goes your front continuing east with a possibility of a stronger storm here or there with anything that fires up near the immediate east coastline through our Saturday afternoon. We could see a few severe storms along a warm front trying to eject on out into the central plains ahead of our next low pressure as early as around Saturday, but that next low pressure system will be back in the Rockies and not really get out until around Monday with its cold front that will spark severe weather. Before we talk about that, I want to talk about how much rain could come through the next couple days out of the near-term active weather pattern. Here's a look at the 48-hour precipitation anticipated from the Weather Prediction Center as we go from Friday early morning to Sunday early morning. You can see not many zones are anticipating a boatload of rain, but wherever we see the heaviest rain totals out of near-term thunderstorms near the Red River Valley in Texas and Oklahoma, and then wherever we exceed an inch of rain, and best chance for that, of course, with some of these East Coast and Ohio Valley storms out of Friday into the weekend, those are going to be spots where at least isolated to scattered and flooding could become a threat, so be vigilant, be on the lookout for these storms because even just regular old garden variety thunderstorms can cause some problems here and there. With that in mind, I want to go ahead and shift gears now to talk about what is going to happen as we go through this weekend into next week in the atmosphere and how that will lead up to the significant storm event that I am anticipating to get going out of Monday into Tuesday and beyond. Oranges and reds on this map are going to indicate where the jet stream is likely to be ridging, where it is pushed north more than usual with warmer than average temperatures across a big zone as a result. On the flip side blues are where you're going to be noting troughs and that's where dips in the jet stream will occur with cooler than average temperatures around and behind those troughs. You can see a big ridge is likely to be building up over parts of the central and eastern U.S. as we go through our Sunday and as that occurs temperatures of 5, 10, 15, in some cases even 20 degrees above average will be setting the stage for that trough to move in from the west into it by the time we go into next week. Whenever you got a big ridge bringing up warmer than average temperatures, especially in the spring, ahead of a strong trough ejection, that is always a setup for severe weather. Let's take a closer look at that projected big dip in the jet stream called a trough using this European model and what it shows for the mid-level jet stream as we go out of the weekend and into next week. Keep a close eye there on the bottom left side of your screen. There comes some energy moving through the southwest U.S. and then boom, coming right on out into parts of the plains by the time you go towards around Monday. It's normally around and to the east of these bigger features moving through the mid-level of the atmosphere where you get that best chance for moisture to move up and help support late day showers and severe thunderstorms. And in this case, Case, that looks like it is especially going to set itself up right smack dab over a broad corridor of the plains. This is a broad trough, but very strong jet stream energy will be working through it. So I'm anticipating a pretty broad zone with a significant threat for severe weather late on Monday. It won't just be Monday though. Look at this. The broad energy continues east by the time we go out of Monday into Tuesday. And once again, along and ahead of that stronger energy, probably yet again, looking at rounds of severe showers and thunderstorms. So anywhere from parts of the central and southern Great Lakes region and the Ohio Valley back down to Texas, could be fair game ahead of the trough for severe weather. That is going to be as we go out of Tuesday into Tuesday night. And even beyond that point in time, if we continue to see any storms closer to the east coast of the U.S. and its surrounding zones, maybe even more severe weather by Wednesday, definitely looks like a potent setup when you really dissect it with the jet stream. 
Just to show you that this isn't just jet stream energy moving through without producing showers and thunderstorms, here's a look at some other guidance, not just your European guidance, but now we're looking at your GFS Ensemble, a blended guidance with your future radar. You can see what it's indicating as we go into our Monday afternoon and evening right along this boundary here and in points east. A, a general zone looking at some lighter greens, and that indicates that there's not high confidence in widespread thunderstorms, but that could almost be worse with the ingredients in place to produce severe weather. Whenever you have more more discrete activity over a broader zone, that's when you could get more supercell storms, and those are the ones that tend to rotate and produce a tornado threat. So I'm really concerned about what could happen Monday, especially if we do see the storms remain a little bit more discreet. They're definitely likely going to be there, though, based on this GFS guidance, and you can see we'll only continue to see storms, and it looks like we'll see a broader zone with possibly more scattered to widespread coverage of them, as well as more intense storms as we go into our Tuesday from the Ohio Valley back down to the Southern Plains. Then out of Tuesday into Wednesday, more storms along that front as it maybe tries to stall out while moving southeast. With the jet stream and forecasted future radar in mind, here's a look at my current ONW severe scale graphic and where I would put down a level 3 to level 4 of 7 for scattered to widespread severe weather already at this time for that Monday and Monday night threat. You can see from North Texas all the way up to the upper Midwest, including Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan, as well as its upper peninsula, we are looking at at least a level three being projected. And there, especially surrounding Iowa and southeast Minnesota, that could be a bullseye where we have that highest threat for not only a severe weather outbreak with damaging winds and hail, but maybe even a tornado outbreak. So be alert for that time frame in those zones, as well as even some surrounding communities. The only other day I have confidence in putting a level 3 of 7 down 4 into next week as of now, that is as we go into our Tuesday and Tuesday night, where once again scattered to widespread damaging winds, hail, and maybe even a tornado outbreak threat could come together. That will likely be from the Ohio Valley back down to the Southern Plains, as I've been mentioning around that time. That's all I have for next week in this video, but of course I'll continue to keep you updated on that threat as we get closer. Let's talk about some of the near-term temperatures, though, leading up towards that event as we go out of Friday and into the weekend days, where we have, of course, that near-term cold front in our Friday that we'll have to watch. You can kind of see the contrast. There's your cold front around Friday. This is that one that's just going to produce general showers and storms to its east. Plenty of 70s to fuel those storms, but nothing really intense, of course, expected to develop throughout that field of 70s and 80s we'll have over a lot of the eastern U.S. By the way, that field goes all the way up to southern New England on Friday afternoon with south and north winds. Notice as we go out of Friday into Saturday, a lot more 60s up in the northeastern quadrant of the U.S. as opposed to some 70s as we will now be behind the front at that point in time. But look at the rebound already. The Plains and Midwest getting back through the 70s, even trying to get towards the 80s by Sunday. That will lead up to those even stronger south winds on Monday that will really warm places up right ahead of that strong round of storms. With that being said, that is all I have for today's edition of Weather in 7. If you want more updates like this, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my videos and live streams in the future. Also, make sure you're checking out the Weather Bell model maps link down in the description for a free trial to the maps that I use on screen in these videos.